so now we're ready to retopologize the head. We're comfortable with the amount of sculpted information that we have in the lips and in the nose and in the eye and in the ear. It's, you can tell it's not completely resolved, but that's all right. We're gonna, it's enough information for us to lay down new topology and have a good idea of these particular structures and how to, how to work with them, where everything is going to go. Now, I've worked ahead and I've established a center line by coloring half of the model a darker color. Now, I prefer to not work in symmetry when retopologizing ahead. That's just a personal preference. You might like to work in symmetry, so I'll leave that up to you. But the idea that I like to, what I like to do is working on half of it, pulling my geometry to the center, and then mirroring that geometry over to the other side. Again, it's just a personal preference. Before we actually get to the retopology, I want to talk about our strategy. You probably have heard polyflow, edge flow, that sort of thing, proper topology. Well, let's, this is an image that I feel like demonstrates that. So the idea is that when you have landmarks of the face, you want to define those in a way that's going to retain the shape of of the geometry and what you want. All right, and the best way to do that is through an edge loop. So you can see, starting with the eye, that we have a nice row of polygons, a couple of rows to support the eye. We've got a nice row of polygons around the nose, around the mouth. We have a row of polygons that goes starting from the nose through the cheek and then ends right in the middle of the chin. And then we have a supporting row of polygons of this purple that also uh, helps. With, it's going to help us with expression. That laugh, that laugh line right there. So that's an important part. We've got an edge or a row of polygons rather that goes from the the brow all the way down to the chin, and then we've got a row of polygons that goes all the way around the ear. The areas in this light blue color are supporting polygons. They're sort of neutral. They're also important. And then the rest of the head, this is all going to be covered with hair, so it's less important. We still need to make it as clean as we can, but we can take some liberties, a lot more liberties back here than we can in the front. It's, a, it's never going to be seen. Also the neck area is a very lightweight, lightweight geometry. The idea from this is that once this is established, then we're going to subdivide this mesh and we'll have a lot more polygons to work with to achieve the different expressions of the face that we want. All right, so I think it's time to jump over to topology and that's next. So on a new mesh layer, we're going to grab the topology pen tool and we're going to start the process. So going to control click with the topology pen and draw out our first polygon and I first want to create this quadrant so we have four quadrants right and then we want to divide each one of these with four cuts, three, four, to get five polygons. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to position the inside of each of these around where the eyelid or where, where the, the skin of the head meets the eye. All right, that's going to be help to define the start of the eyelid. Work our way around. One, two, three, and four. Pull these down. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to distribute these more or less evenly. And this side, one, two, three, and four.
and distribute these. And the next thing we're going to do is to try and match this orange shape. Just the outside of it. Let's look at a front view. And this is going to be our center line. All right, so this is going to be about in the center of the where the eye is and this is going to be our center line. I'm just going to pull that down so that I can more easily identify that that's the center. All right, and this counting out 1 2 3 4 5. I'm going to pull that edge in just slightly. So that's just an indicator so I can quickly reference. This is a quadrant, this is a quadrant. This one and let's count over to define this one. 1 2 3 4 5. And that's going to be the center of our fourth quadrant. Work on that shape a little bit more and pull these polygons down. You can see that in this quadrant out here I've got three rows of polygons that are going to attach to this light blue area and that's going to be more or less straight across more or less and then the rest is go up, going up it's just going to follow a nice curve. Coming up from our working on this quadrant, this lighter orange, next we'll pull that over. This is going to be this little area right here. I'm exaggerating that just a touch so that it'll help me. And that looks pretty good to start. We're going to go and tweak these of course as we get a little further into it. I'm going to shift middle click on that edge and that's going to establish another row of polygons like we talked about. So now we have the orange defined. We're going to do the eyelids last, so I want to get the face in place first. All right, so let's go ahead and take fill in this negative space first. So I'm just going to draw these out all the way down to the chin and get a good vantage point for us to get that ch that, that bottom edge lined up with the chin. Just approximate that. Something like that. And then we need four rows. So let's divide that. So three cuts. One, two, and three. We've got that. So that is the light blue section. Let's go ahead and take a look at this, this little point right here and let's count over from this center quadrant, the center line. So one, two, three. So at the third polygon, we're going to pull that over. So one, two, three. So that polygon, we're just going to come over and help define the inside of the bridge of the nose. one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then five, and then to trace this line back to confirm that that is the center edge horizontally. All right, and that's correct. Now let's put in the row of red. This is going to go across the bridge of the nose. So one span and then two spans. You can see I'll just pull that right to the middle. You can see that we've got two spans there. Let's continue that all the way down. Now this line coming down two from this this pole right here, one two spans. All right, this this is another important landmark. 
This line is going to go right, it's going to cut the mouth right through the middle. It's going to split the lips there. All right, so that from there, we're going to come down one more and then pull this around to form the loop. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and then over three. One, two, and three. I'm going to leave a little bit of space down here to accommodate the other edges we're going to put in, other rows we're going to put in. And then we'll just complete the bottom of the chin by pulling down these last bit of red down here. Okay, so we've got that defined. Now we can put in our negative space, or this neutral space rather, across here pretty easily. We actually want two rows, so I'm just going to middle mouse click, shift middle mouse click on that, pull that over here, and then that completes that section. We can go ahead and define the row of blue edges over here. And that's going to go all the way around. I probably want to pull this in a little bit. And then pull this up around. And this is going to go all the way around the brow area. Before I get there, I'm just going to go ahead and pull that whole row out. Shift right click on that edge to pull that entire row out. And then just follow this all the way around the brow. To the center line. Do that for both of these darker blue rows. Okay, let's put in the second row of red. Again, that line's going to come right down the middle of the mouth, right here. To the middle of the bridge of the nose. So around. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's pull out this purple area. And this is going to hug the mouth, the bottom of the lip here. Give myself a little bit of room for the green mouth area. All right, and then we can have a triangle right here. And it's going to pinch right there, but that's all right because that is a good area to have a pinch, and it's really going to help to define the form of that nostril. Okay, now we need a row of polygons going around the nose. So let's see. We've got from here, that's one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And we'll even that up. I'm going to continue this loop around the nose. And this is that white area. Okay, and then we're going to come up from the bottom one and two. And then here, and then here. And now I want this one to tuck into there. Okay, so this is a little bit of a loop 
there and then we'll complete the nose like this and then we can sort of pull these around to better, de better define that form All right, we've got a neutral area right here of this lighter blue color. That's the white, so we're going to pull that up and then put another row of blue. That blue is going to come right into there and that's going to help us set up the loop of the mouth. So that's that. And now a row of the mouth. Again, that laugh line or that center line rather is important, so keep that. Loop that all the way around. And another row. Pull that out to the to the middle line, and then a final row to complete the mouth. And this goes right along the center line of the mouth where it's going to split, and then we'll just attach the rest of that up. Okay, so that's pretty quick work. I'm going to go ahead and pull this back out. And then we can work over towards the ear. You can see in our reference we have one row of gray, and that's going to come up. From the, from the bottom here. And that's going to come up one, two, three, four to our center line here. So that's the pole right there. So one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That looks good. And that'll come up all the way. All right, so we'll just take that up to there. So one, so this, this is the pole we're referencing. This is this pole right here. And we can see that we want to bring up the ear close to that. So maybe one more. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Once we get over here, it's a little um, a little hard to see the reference. We want to bend that edge around, okay? So we do want a loop around here. Pull that out and bend that around there. Now we may add some spans as we get further along with the topology in the back, but for right now, I just want to comfortably establish some polygons. We might add a loop here. We'll see how it goes, but to me that looks pretty good. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. You might put another one in there. Again, we'll just sort of see how it goes and see if that works for us. 
All right, so now we just need to fill in the rest of the area, the back of the, the top of the head, the back of the head, and the neck and under the chin. I want to establish a row of polygons underneath the chin to help support that line. All right, so let's do that. You'll find that good topology Working with good topology is, um, is really, really helpful, especially in articulation. You, don't, you, you find yourself fighting bad topology. So if you plan it right, it's a really good thing. All right, and I think that should come around too. Okay, and that'll make that turn. We'll just sort of leave that as an indicator. You can see I'm not working really big here. I'm sorry, really small. I like to work a little bit bigger because we're, we're going to subdivide this. And so our geometry, we're going to have a lot more geometry to work with, which is the plan. And I want to sort of reduce this down a little bit. Okay, so let's work on that. I think that's a good spot. Okay, and then with those, let's see if we can just pull those closer to the neck. I might want to take that out that way. And that'll reduce a span for us. Let's just see how that goes. All right, this is not an edge loop right here. You can see how that it doesn't continue, but that's all right. We can work with it. Let's just see how many spans we have. Let's see. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight's a pretty good number. For this particular application. We could probably reduce this a little bit more because when we subdivide that 8 is going to turn into 16. Still okay. Alright, so I'm going to take this whole edge and just pull that down to the bottom and then just establish our polygons down here. And then we'll divide up that long neck next. All right. So we do have an edge loop around here now. And let's just put one span in right now. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is to take a look at filling in the rest of this area, the head top of the head and the back of the head. The Those areas are not as important in terms of definition. So we can take some liberties with a little bit of the polygon stretching. It's not going to be, they're not going to be super perfect, but we're going to make them as good as we can. So far, so good. Pull these around. I think I want to take this one over. I 
do want to have a good defined loop around here. That's going to help retain symmetry. I think that might be a good way, a good place to reduce it. Or to make that turn. Alright, so now I'm looking at how these are going to fit into here. Let's put another row or two and see how that's shaping up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so we've got three polygons going into two polygons. We can solve that. We have a triangle there. That's all right. It's back of the head. No one but you and me will ever know. <laughs> okay. So that looks pretty good. The next thing we'll do is tackle the ear. Ear's a little bit tricky. Let's get in here and get a row of polygons going around this area. Now, some of this topology is getting in my way, all of this other stuff. I don't need to necessarily see that. So I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to hit Shift H and it's going to hide unselected. All right, so Shift H to do that. So now I can have a better idea of where I'm going. And I will often do that, just hide geometry or lock geometry, whatever is easiest. But in this particular case, I really need to see where it is I'm going. And hiding that geometry just helps me do that. This loop is going to continue this way. You can see this little ridge that we need to work on. It's a little bit thin, but that's all right. I'm going to try to match these up, these edges to these edges. So there may be a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of editing that we need to do. But that's kind of the problem, problem solving I should say, associated with topology. There are a number of right solutions, but having a logical order is very helpful. Something that makes sense to the model and something that you feel like is a good choice. based on your output. Working our way around here. I think we're in pretty good shape with this. Looks pretty good there. Looks pretty good there. Let's do, let's see, we can take that out and then just get a quad there. Now let's drop down an edge and this is going to be the inside of that wall. Just get a good vantage point 
when you're working on really tight geometry. It's really close. Just get a good vantage point. Do yourself a favor. I want this to be a loop around here. Again, we want to retain the integrity of our form. Edge loops are great ways to do that. So we want to work hard toward that. So that's the inside of that little wall there. And let's pull this out again. Just a, this little flat area. I'm not exactly sure where this is going to meet up just yet. But we will figure that out. That looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good there. nearly perfect. We've got a little triangle. That's alright. That'll work just fine because that triangle, once we subdivide, will get resolved. Alright, so I'll hit U to unhide our geometry. We've got the ear. So the eye, the eyelids are going to be next. I want to pull those down. I want to give myself two. I think it just we're going to start off with one span. So this is our center line. All right, I want that to come down to match up with here. Now this particular model, she's her eyelids are not going to come all the way down and meet. Okay, so if we needed to do that, then we would add more geometry. But for this pose, uh, she's never going to blink. So we don't necessarily need to include all that geometry, all that extra geometry. To we don't need to work with that. So we don't include it. It's easily done though. Should we ever want to animate her, we can just extend the edges of those polygons up on the eye eyelids and make that accommodation. sort of working my way around to where I think that that lower lid is going to be. All right, and I think I'm going to end that lid there. And I'm going to extend this out a bit. To say there. I don't want those to hit each other because they're going to be separate. And another row here. I probably will end it just like that. I could put another row in here. And that will that could help to complete that. So it's going to be very small, a very small detail in the model when we actually have eye, eye, um, eyelashes. So you just use your discretion on that. So that is basically the eyelid roughed in. Now the next step, there are two things that we need to do. One, we need re to 
reestablish or to establish rather this center line and then we'll flop the model over we'll flop the geometry over to the other side so we'll have a complete head and then we'll go through the process of establishing some uniformity to the polygons you can see that while these are square they're a little skewed not quite the same size in proportion to each other so we're going to take some time to do that alright so now let's establish a center line so I'm going to double click on that center line and I'm going to control middle mouse drag around the edges that I don't want so I've got all those edges in the middle and you can see that they're not properly lined up well we can easily achieve that by going under your model tab right here and under vertex we'll go to set position now our model is symmetrical on the x-axis or we want it to be so we want to set this at zero on the x and then hit OK you might have seen those lines jump over a little bit okay so now we have half of the model shift V and then hit apply and now we have a symmetrical model make sure that you have symmetry on when you go to adjust the uniformity of some of these polygons you can see that while they are basically square we can still they still need to be tweaked a little bit use this reference as um, a general guideline as to the spacing and the shapes so this next step is going to be it's going to take a little bit of time to come back and just establish good clean geometry across the model you'll want to pay attention to the landmarks especially around the lips and the eyes and the nostrils and nose just pull those even those out a bit take a little time to do that the better your topology is at this stage when we subdivide the better that topology will be because it's a building process so again take a little bit of time to do that work out some of the spans here see if you can reduce the amount of stretching that we have across here and that'll set us up to subdivide the mesh which is the next step